Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I swear I've heard this song somewhere before. I read the lyrics and I could almost put a melody to them. And I think that melody was on a roller coaster. Did this play on a roller coaster somewhere? Let me know in live chat. As you can imagine, I haven't done any vocal analysis of it, probably because I was carefully screaming at the time. So today, I'm gonna hone in on Brian Johnson's voice. Let's get to it. Oh my gosh. I should have worn my horns. I did not get the MO. Of course he's a tiefling. Of course Angus, right? I think this is Angus. Uh, I, Yeah, of course he's a tiefling. He has got hellish, incredible playing skills of, oh, I wish I'd worn my horns for this. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I was really enjoying a lot of his guitar riffs. Also really cool fade that they did here. That part in particular is really cool. <laughs> like the sort of like scary winding down while the smoke is pumping up is just a very, very cool counter effect. <laughs> Everyone else got the ML for horns. I clearly missed something here. I bet a bunch of y'all watching this are wearing your horns and I'm just jealous. I I have horns. They're incredible. They are very distinctly tiefling horns, uh, horns for D&D &D, uh, 5e in case you wondered. Uh, but anyhow, uh, horns aside, Brian Johnson just has a killer voice. And I know that this was originally Bon Scott's song Right, I think this was on the last album before he passed and then the torch went to Brian Johnson. And I, I'm i so impressed, honestly, by how Brian Johnson has carried on. I've gotten to know just a little bit about ACDC and I really think that Brian Johnson has done an incredible job of taking over. I'm gonna go back to his vocal entrance. There's so many cool things. Here? <laughs> so, in the writing, first of all, there's a lot of space. They have a really great groove, and then they leave a lot of space to be filled sometimes by noodling on the guitar, and sometimes by really fun, ooh, kind of noises from Brian Johnson. I think it's very smart writing. It doesn't feel overwhelming, yet there's space to grow within it.
just want to just check out his mouth. It's fascinating to me. I'll talk about why in just a moment. <laughs> Check out how close he actually is keeping his jaw here. He's got a lot of lip movements, but right here, he's it's just starting. He's not at a super high volume yet. It's very sustained. It's very pointed. It has cut, but he's not wailing. He's keeping it just contained here, but using tons of lips. <laughs> <laughs> He's totally nailing staying in the pocket, meaning that there is an area of resonance that he just continues to focus his sound into and go ping, 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 ping all around the resonance. I like to think about our uh, vocal tract, especially the upper part, really. Uh, I think about it like a ping, uh, ping, 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 pinball, pinball machine, not a ping ball, but a pinball machine, <laughs> because you want to hit that pinball to different areas to light them up. There's so many options for resonance in your face. And sometimes you can get resonance that's right here and it's a certain nasal resonance. It's not necessarily nasality, but it's a nasal resonance. Even up here, sometimes it'll sound a little bit nasal to us. You can get behind the eyes, you can get the certain clarity with that. You can get teethy, you can get snarly. There are just so many different areas in your mouth, in your throat. Sometimes people even feel resonance in their chest, but mostly up here we have this pinball machine of resonance. Now, you don't want to have one note sound like it's in the left side of the machine and then the other part is in the bottom right corner. You kind of want to hit the same area over and over and over as a singer, and that means that you're staying in a pocket. This helps, it helps your audience know it's the same singer the entire time. If you switch up the way this is all formed, suddenly it might sound like a different person's voice is coming out. It also really helps just keep the continuity and the attention going. It helps people feel like they're in the right spot. It makes it easier for people to understand your lyrics if you're hitting that same area of resonance the whole time. And it also is a lot easier to maintain pitch when you're shifting all these different areas around. Sometimes your inner sensation of where the pitch is will totally get messed up. So he's staying in a pocket so well. Oh, this also makes him much easier to produce, by the way. There's a lot of really cool things. Just notice now, now that you know about that vocal pinball machine, just notice how he stays there. Okay, and one other thing here. As we're going to that same area of resonance every time, lighting it up, you also have to have this stuff underneath in place. You have to have the same kind of, uh, I guess, steel ball that you're sending in that direction. That would be your air and your phonation. You gotta keep those pretty steady so that you can send them to the same area of resonance because if those shift, it's gonna be harder to keep it in a pocket. So that means essentially he's got his three foundational elements of vocal technique totally lined up. He takes a breath in, then he uses that breath to phonate, so the vocal folds go wacka, wacka, wacka as the air comes past, and then that sound is funneled through this resonance. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I seriously thought my screen was bouncing for a bit. 
That's insane. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to come back here because I thought I even saw a wave in the audience of essentially when the sound is hitting or when they're bouncing. Yep, there's a little wave there. Oh my gosh. It was. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo <laughs> added some dip thong in there oh yeah this was an iron man i know i'd seen that in some notes coming up i was like where where in Iron Man was that? I saw Iron Man a couple of times. Was it, was it when they were driving in a foreign country at one point, maybe? Anyhow, I don't remember the exact moment when this showed up in the film, but it definitely is familiar, definitely. I think it was the roller coaster. I think that's, that's probably where it sunk into me the first time. That's so cool! <laughs> oh, oh! Oh my gosh, okay, so this wave that we're seeing in the audience, I just have to talk about it for a moment because it is such an important facet that live performers deal with that most people never, ever consider. But when you're singing in a stadium or a huge auditorium, it takes time for the sound to travel all the way to the back. That's why we get that kind of cool wave here. And in opera, what happens is the sound travels to the back and then once it hits the back of the auditorium, it'll come back at you. This is super dangerous as an opera singer because with that delay of time, if you're relying on the sound in your ears to keep you with the orchestra, you will be behind. You have to watch the conductor. The conductor is the person that's getting your voice and the orchestra voice at the same time. He's able to coordinate that. That often means that as an opera singer, if you're in a big house, sometimes you need to feel like you're singing a little ahead of the beat, but really you watch the conductor and don't rely on that timing just from your ears. In this case, at this time, they're gonna have in-ears. That was a huge game changer. Sometimes you'll have monitors on the stage as well, but if you have an audience singing this at you, that presents another uh, conundrum at the same time because they're not always on time. And you've got that sound bouncing back from different places in the stadium as well. It is actually really complicated to try and keep your entire band together, but in-ears are one of those greatest gifts in music technology that has really helped this be a lot more manageable in recent years. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love the way he's having so much fun with the sound. It's like playful. <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, he does have a natural grit, I think, in his sound. Sometimes people will add that on top, but his, I think, is very much a natural, natural part of his sound. And it's just having so much fun. It makes me smile and it feels like even for an aggressive, heavy sound, this feels uplifting. <laughs> Also, notice he has bent knees a lot of times on stage. That can be really helpful for taking care of your knees, but also can be helpful for keeping your support system grounded. If people lock their knees, they tend to take their support system and bring it higher, which is definitely not good for vocal longevity. <laughs> Just 
just so fun. She's so playful. Oh my gosh. That was awesome. Like, not only is it really fun to see how sticky this course is and how much the audience wants to jump along, but in that break there, right before I think we're about to launch into an instrumental break, I think, I think, uh, they again had a lot of space. They, I feel like this was, it seems like this was the starter song in this set. I don't know if it was partway through the concert and like halftime or something, but probably I would imagine it was the start because it just has such a good energy to propel a concert forward on. Also, it's not mega rangy, right? It's It stays within a fairly, oh, it's not like three octaves, right? It's staying in more limited kind of range and he's having so much fun in it, really warming up the voice and going to different areas. A lot of times when people, bands are planning out their sets, you need to take into account what the vocalist is going to have to do. You don't want them to sing a ton of really, really high songs and then hit them with a low quiet song right afterwards. The voice does not work like that. Those low quiet notes will be gone. So it's good to carefully plan. I feel like this would be just a great starter song for a voice. Opens up the expression, warms up that middle, starts to expand outwards as we're going along. And then lots of space to build anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Oh. Oh, that was cool. That was cool. I feel, honestly, I, I would have loved a little more guitar solo in there. I really enjoy, there's a certain peppiness and optimism in his guitar playing that is fun. Um, but at the same time, it's got nice drive and fantastic rhythm too. And then there's really fun little uh, technical flourishes that he adds in sometimes, like that last slide that are just exciting and add little sprinkles of uh, Nutella candies on top, essentially. I'm gonna go back. Right? <laughs> Like this part just mixed Brian Johnson a little bit lower so we could get more of the feeling of the audience in this live performance. I'm not sure though. Um, he might have pulled the mic back away from himself a little bit to get more of that live feeling. Uh, but it's it is a really, really nice mix, however it was done. <laughs> <laughs> he has to be able to punch through so much sound and <laughs> that looks fun <laughs> but 
I think partly to do that, he actually goes really wide and the teeth here has a lot of sort of E sound. If you think about a really overdone E vowel, a lot of times the tongue comes really far forward, the lips will spread wide. And he has that kind of position with his mouth a lot of times, which makes it more brassy. It tends to have a lot of cut. There's a specific, uh, there's some overtones in it that will specifically have it make more cut. So that I think is one of the ways that he's getting through it. The other thing that he's just really good at is sustaining. Once he starts a sound, he just keeps driving through it. It's like the whole time. It's pretty, pretty stunning. And imagine trying to have that much cut over this huge audience singing the same melody. That's crazy. I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> I love that debug. Yeah, I got Ooh. Everybody coming down with us. Come on. Yeah, and I'm going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was cool. Like, you could really hear him going into a, a lower register there. And the way that he gathered it back together was interesting. Let me listen to that one. Coming down with us, come on. Yeah, and I'm going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I wanted to see if he had dropped some of the grit when he went lower because normally if people have natural grit in the voice, it won't just be in the high notes. You'll hear it in the lowers too. And I definitely hear it some, maybe a little bit less though. I want to hear it one more time. Everybody coming down with us, come on. Yeah, and I'm going down. Man, that come on is so well supported. That's a, like, it's just a great example of how to holler without pushing the voice. Everybody coming down with us, come on. Yeah, and I'm going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I say, wow. Yeah. Oh. I said, wow. Wow, it's so much fun to hear him play with his instrument like this. I mean, specifically Brian Johnson's voice, so both instruments are super fun, but it's, look at the way he's making these mouth shapes. Again, that super wide spread feeling gets that cut in there. It's, but it's so interesting with that sort of gritty sound, I hear a little more lightness in it right now with some extra airflow. He's definitely pulled back the dynamic sound, but he's also using the mic in some really, really clever ways. There's just so much that's happening in this moment. Okay. Oh, baby. Oh, I want to go back. I want to catch all of them. <laughs> oh, no, further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hear him using a y, a y sound quite often. And that y is very good for helping the tongue roll forward and keep the sound forward. That might be a great way to sort of reiterate that perfect pinball ping, 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 ping position. Look at the mic technique there. So the way, when he starts up higher, he actually brings it back further. Automatically, most voices are going to be louder when they are higher. So this actually helps to, it helps the guys in the booth a lot because it makes it so it's more steadily one dynamic. I said, That's so much fun. Wow. Oh, baby. I think I got one more. In I said, wow.
oh, wait a second. His horns disappeared. When did the horns disappear? Did he throw them to the audience? I totally missed the horns disappearing. He's obviously in disguise now. The whole time that was going by, I was so intrigued by the sounds and how he was making some really amazing vocal noises in particular, and of course, incredible guitarists, that I didn't at all talk about how cool these lyrics are. I love the way that this is essentially discussing about how difficult it is to tour. That is such an important message, I think, for people to understand about live performances and bands. And oh my gosh, it is so impressive that someone is able to sustain so much touring and vocal use over so many years. That that definitely speaks to having a good vocal foundation. If you want to hear some other singers that I think have been able to maintain an incredible vocal foundation over years and years of performance, you can check out this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day.